Welcome to Cornerstone United Methodist Church. My name is Scott Pickering, and I am blessed to be the pastor of this congregation. The mission of the United Methodist Church is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. During the COVID pandemic, we are rediscovering that the work of the church really takes place outside of the church building. It occurs instead in our neighborhoods, our grocery stores, our doctor's offices, and let us not forget social media. This week, I am premiering our first video of The Happenings, our weekly announcement email. We plan to share this video every Sunday before our Facebook Live service at 10 a.m. It will also be added to the worship service that will be uploaded to our YouTube channel so you can stay in touch with all of the happenings of our congregation. Now, here are the announcements for this Sunday, August the 2nd. Missions. The Missions Committee will be meeting Monday night, August 3rd at 7 p.m. in room 106. Please go to bit.ly backward slash cumc save a seat to reserve your spot. We are now scheduling times for small groups to meet. Small groups include Sunday school classes, youth, children's, grief share, Bible studies, and even scouting. Each group will need to reserve a room to use, as only certain rooms can be used that will be big enough to provide physical social distancing. Most day times, hours, and evening hours are available. If you have not heard from your group leader, please reach out to them. And leaders, if you want to fill out a form for room usage, just let us know and we will email you a copy of the form. Cornerstone is following the guidelines of the CDC as well as the guidelines of the North Georgia Conference of the United Methodist Church. I want to share with you a website address, one that I've been going to for daily updates. It's called globalepidemics.org. Cornerstone United Methodist Church is constantly checking globalepidemics.org for updated COVID risk levels for our county. There are four levels. Green represents less than one new case a day per 100,000 people. Yellow represents between one and nine new cases a day per 100,000 people. Orange represents between 10 and 24 new cases a day per 100,000 people. And lastly, red represents more than 25 new cases a day per 100 people. These numbers are based on the average of the past seven days. At the time of the filming of this video, Calumet County is at the orange level, which means accelerated spread, stay at home orders and or rigorous tests and trace programs advised. The North Georgia Conference of the United Methodist Church urges congregations at the orange level to hold in-person gatherings outdoors and allow staff to work on site. More information about the North Georgia Conference advice and guidelines can be found at bit.ly bit.ly backwards last all caps ngumccovid as your pastor i fully understand the need for us to be one in community spirit and presence i am also aware of the heightened risk of covid in our community that coupled with the widespread lack of usage of masks makes large gatherings nearly impossible it's frustrating when everyone you look to for advice seems to be looking at some other party to make the decisions that no one wants to make. We do not currently have a date for reopening for in-person worship. Therefore, we are committed to providing opportunities for small groups to gather and providing the very best online worship experience possible. That being said, our thanks goes to the staff and the volunteers that put together our Sunday live services. They work hard all week to make sure that things go smoothly, sound is great, music is uplifting, and the message is on target. Please keep this group uplifted in your prayers as well. Again, we hope you are able to watch our Sunday morning church service on Facebook at 10 a.m. And remember, if you can't connect to Facebook, you can view the service on our YouTube channel. All you have to type in in the address bar is bit.ly backwards slash cumc noonan after the live Facebook service. Lastly, we are very grateful to all of you who are continuing to provide financial support for our ministries. There are many ways to give, including our new mailing address for your 
check our um, cash donations. It's at Cornerstone UMC, 90-F, Linda Trace, number 319, and that's here in Munich. You also have the opportunity just to um, give by text, or you can give um, through the mobile app. Our last good news to share for this day is we are looking forward to a triple Eagle Scout Corps of Honor. Joshua, Timothy, and Thomas will be receiving their Eagle Scout Awards this coming Saturday, August the 8th at 10 a.m. So we wish them a very good day and a very blessed opportunity to celebrate the hard work that they've accomplished. Thank you for tuning in and I hope to see you in worship. Good day.
Good morning and welcome to worship here at Cornerstone United Methodist Church. My name is Andy Unger and I'm the director of student ministries here at this church. We are so glad that you decided to join us this morning and worship together here on Facebook or later on in the week on YouTube. We are so excited that we get to worship our Lord that has blessed us so much together. But as we enter into this time of worship, let's go before the Lord in prayer. God, beyond all seeing and knowing, we meet you in the night of change and crisis and wrestle with you in the darkness of doubt. Give us the will and spirit to live faithfully in love as we are loved and awaken us a hunger for food to satisfy both our bodies and our hearts. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Today is August. Thank you. 
Greetings, my name is Scott Pickering. I'm glad that you are worshiping with us today. As we come to this time of prayer, we want to keep in mind all those who are suffering from the COVID pandemic. The state of Georgia is still in the red category, and Coweta County is in the orange category, um, meaning that the risks are higher here than what we would like for them to be. We like to keep our community in our prayers, the hospitals, the those on the front line who are dealing with patients who have COVID-19. For those who have made it out of the hospital, we want to pray this morning that they will be become stronger with each passing moment, that they'll feel a wholeness in their spirit and their body that makes them whole. We want to pray for others who are in need of healing, those who are in need of care during a time of hospice. We pray that as they make preparations for this journey from here into your kingdom, that you'll be with them every step of the way to comfort them and to guide them. We pray, Lord, for those who have great needs, whether they be great needs in our opinion or not. Any need that we bring before you, you receive with seriousness, but also with gratefulness. We also want to give you thanks during this prayer for the ways that you have allowed us to give to your ministry and to support your ministry, even when our church may not be as fully open as we would like it to be. So brothers and sisters, let us go to our Lord in prayer. Gracious and loving Father, we come into your house this day knowing that you are present wherever we may be, that you've promised never to leave our side, and when it seems like you're not beside us, it's not because you turned away from us, but rather because we turned away from you. In those moments of turning away, we see what the world is truly like. We see hatred. We see vileness. We see people wanting to harm others. We also see the brokenness of being a human being. Our bodies are not created to last forever. So sometimes we have the painful journey of traveling with someone we love so dearly who is about to make their transition from this world into your glory. We pray that you be with all hospice patients, that you allow them to know that you're present during this time of journeying. And we pray that you'll be with their loved ones to give them hope to remind them of the glorious gift that Jesus gave all who believe in him, the gift of a resurrection, the gift of knowing that this life is not the end, but just the beginning of a far greater story. We pray that you'll be also with the many who have been affected by the COVID-19. We pray that you will help those who are still sick and in hospitals to receive the care that they need in order to be made whole and well again. We pray for those who have made it home, that you will continue to be with them as they try to recover fully. We pray, Lord, for others who have other concerns regarding their health, who are in need of care. Allow them to be able to receive that care. Allow them to have a sense of peace as they wait and wait and give them the strength they need for any therapy they may have afterwards. We pray that you will also be with those battling cancer, that when they wake up in the morning, that they realize that they're not facing a day all alone and in despair, but that you're present, you're right there beside them, and that you will help carry them when they are too weak to carry themselves. Lord, we look in our lives and we see how much you have blessed us with. You've given us so much a place to have as a home, food to eat, a plenty. You've given us material possessions that we sometimes hold dearer to our heart than your own word. We pray this morning that you will cause a generous spirit to fall upon each of us, that we may look at what we have been blessed with and say we have been given more than enough. And then, begin to share what you bless us with, especially for those who have so much less. Help us out of our abundance to give to missions far away, but also in our own backyard. No matter which way we give to you this day, 
we know that you receive that gift with a grateful heart. And we just pray that we can use those gifts in order to bring hope to people who need it most. Help us to feed the hungry. Help us to clothe the naked. Help us to find shelter for those who are homeless. Help us to see them not as strangers, but to see them as you do, as a child of the Most High King, a fellow brother, a fellow sister. And as we work together to meet all people's needs, help us to be an example to those that see us. Help our politicians see that we can move beyond party affiliation to a way in which we can come together as one and work for the good for all. We pray for peace in cities that have known protests for many, many weeks. We pray that the war against racism will finally be won by you. And we don't make judgments upon others based on anything outside of the fact that they are your beloved daughter or son. We pray that you will also be with this world to help us combat the problems, not just COVID-19, but the other problems that we face. Help us to move away from war towards peace. Be with our soldiers as they help to promote peace and especially to offer freedom to those who've known only oppression. And then help us step away from the things that bind us here and now. Help us to give up our selfish will for your will. Help us to give up our desire for power so that your power can be clearly seen. Help us to move beyond our wants to another person's needs. In all that we do, Lord, we acknowledge that we try to be good and obedient children, but we always don't come up to the mark that you would have us to be. We often stumble. We give in to temptations. We go our wayward way willfully, all the while ignoring your call for us to return. Help us hear that call this day, O oh Lord. That call that says, come back home to me. And then give us the strength, give us the courage to accept that invitation to come back home to you. Help us be washed clean of our sins so we can be the disciple that Jesus has called us to be. As we join in the prayer that he taught all of his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Fullness of eternal promise Stirring in your sons and daughters Earth revealing heaven's wonders Spirit come, Spirit come What you spoke is now All your children shall behold it. Dreams awaken in this moment. Spirit come, Spirit come. Pour it out. Let your love run over here and now. Let your glory fill this house.
house, pour it out. Let your love run over here and now. Let your glory fill this house. Now the world awaits your presence. This power is within us. We will rise to be your witness. Spirit, come. Spirit, come. Pour it out. Let your love run over here and now.
As you can tell already, we have been blessed with great music today by our mini choir, by our special prelude this morning, and also our contemporary singers. Let us now go to our Lord as we read our scripture for today from the Gospel of St. Matthew, the 14th chapter, verses 13 through 21. Listen for the word of God. When Jesus heard about John, he withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself. When the crowds learned this, they followed him on foot from the cities. When Jesus arrived and saw a large crowd, he had compassion for them and healed those who were sick. That evening, his disciples came and said to him, This is an isolated place and it's getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go into the villages and buy food for themselves. But Jesus said to them, There's no need to send them away. You Give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here except five loaves of bread and two fish. He said, Bring them here to me. He ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. He took the five loaves of bread and the two fish, looked up towards the heavens, blessed them, and broke the loaves apart and gave them to his disciples. Then the disciples gave them to the crowds. Everyone ate until they were full, and they filled 12 baskets with the leftovers. About 5,000 men, plus women and children, had eaten. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, we pray. Amen. Now, if I were to announce to you today that the sermon today is about tithing, you would likely expect what my main point of the sermon would be. It's that we should all do it, right? Actually, though, today's sermon is not about tithing. But I want to start today's message looking at the practice of tithing. Consider that in the Garden of Eden, before the fall of humankind, there was no such thing as tithing. God simply put Adam and Eve in this beautiful garden and said to them, you may eat freely of every tree in the garden. God then went on to warn them to keep away from just one tree, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But that was not because God wanted it for himself. It wasn't God trying to say, I'm the only one that can possess this. It's mine and mine alone. Rather, he did it because that's what was good for them. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil was not good for them to eat from. That's the reason he withholds it from them. And he says to them, for if you eat of that tree, then you shall die. God is giving generously here in the Garden of the Eden. And he's not withholding any good thing from his creation. But one result of the fall of humankind is that we are not so easily free in expression, expressing our care for others. We are not always as generous in our spirits as God is in God's spirit. It is more natural for most of us to consider how much we can keep for ourselves rather than thinking of how much can we give to someone else. Thus, God gave us the instructions about tithing so that when we are calculating how little we can give away and still call ourselves righteous, that we would have some beginning point in order to do so, some number in mind. And we need that guideline in our lives. For if we look in our world, we see that there are serious issues of supply and demand. Often there is not enough supply for the demand, or at least not enough of the supply reaching the ones who truly are in need of the supplies. Think back over the past several months. The times that you've been to a grocery store and you looked down the paper aisle and you saw not a single package of bounty paper towels. You could not find a roll of Charmin anywhere on that aisle. And then you go one aisle over to the cleaning aisle and Lysol wipes, that must be something that was prehistoric, something of a long ago past, because we ain't seeing it now. And you may even be like me. There might have been some item of food that you've missed. We've saw the prices of beef rise because of COVID-19. 
But I also noticed that the Orville Redenbacher's pour over popcorn, but butter popcorn, was also out of stock. It didn't occur back into the stores until about two weeks ago. And I bought every last one of the packages because I missed it. But isn't it interesting that sometimes the things that we think we really need are not the things that we need. I'm sure that there there were other folks who would love to have had that pour-over butter popcorn that I hoarded in that moment. But we do that with lots of things in our lives. We take advantage of the blessings that God has given us, and we think not always of the ones who are less blessed than us. Most of the time when we want something, we do what? We go out and get it. That's what makes Christmas so hard for so many people. You're going through a list of people you want to buy gifts with, but they already have everything. In this story, we learn today that God has given out of abundance to us. But at the same time, we need to realize that not all of the resources have been equally distributed on this planet. We need to realize that there are some, even in this country, of great plenty who do not have food to eat from day to day or a place to hide from the beating sun. That there are some who have struggles just barely making it from day to day. We would like to think that as a developed country, the most developed country in all the world, that there's not a single person that ever dies of hunger But there is here in the United States. There are young children who are locked up into closets, barely given anything besides water and bread because of the sickness of their parents or their caregivers. There are homeless people who time after time will beseech someone to say, can you give me something to eat? And we roll up our windows, turn the air conditioning on high, and hit the gas. We live in a land of plenty. But there are still many who struggle for day-to-day life. And in our world, thousands of people die every day because of hunger. Think about the scraps from the last meal that you had. Think about someone that could have really made a meal just off of your scraps. We live in a world in which God has given us out of abundance many gifts But we're not always very good at making sure those gifts affect those who are in most need. But in the very beginning, that was not so. Adam and Eve had it great. They were placed in a garden that had great abundance. We can call that the ethic of the garden, this idea of abundance. And although we might not first recognize it, But our gospel story that I just read from the Gospel of Matthew is really a story that takes us back to that garden ethic, that sense of abundance. It's a story that pretty much any follower of Jesus Christ has heard at some point in their lives, and we could almost repeat it by heart or at least get into big details. We know that one day Jesus is teaching a large crowd, a massive crowd, as our president would say, it was huge. And as he's teaching that the day is going on and his disciples come to him and say, Lord, send them to the home. Send them to the villages so they can buy food. It's supper time almost. Send them away. And then Jesus just simply turns to them and says, you, feed them. And they're left with that problem. How do we feed all these folks? But they were able to come across five loaves of bread and two fish. And Jesus blesses that food. And then the disciples begin the process of distributing it. And at the end of this parable, at the end of this story, we discover that everybody gets something to eat and that the leftovers fill 12 baskets. Now, I've abbreviated the incident a little bit, but if you read it from your Bible, it might strike you that this is a miracle that actually goes beyond what is actually needed in order for it to be classified as a miracle. I mean, you could really stop this story at the point that they all ate and say, yes, that's a miracle. Let's go on to the next story. 
But notice that there's more information that is poured into this story. There's more details yet to come. You could say that there is an abundance of details that is yet to be revealed. Not only does everyone eat in this story, not only do they get past that miracle of feeding those who are hungry, but Matthew says that they were filled. They were full. They had plenty to eat. And if we read the story as Matthew might have told it, then we don't find out until the very end the huge number of people that were there. Matthew's conclusion is more like this. Everybody ate until they could eat no more. And even then, there was still 12 baskets chock full of food, leftovers. And the crowd, the crowd number 5,000 men, plus women and children. And every one of them had their full. The feeding of the crowd illustrates abundance. And that is the ethics of the Garden of Eden. And it's also the ethic for the kingdom of God yet to come. The real miracle that day is not so much that everybody got a square meal, but that Jesus took what was not enough and made it more than enough. Jesus took what was not enough and made it more than enough. I want to invite you, if you're at your homes or wherever you may be, to look a little bit crazy if someone's staring at you. If you're all by yourself, I want to ask you to talk out loud, to repeat that sentence with me out loud. If someone says, I saw you talking to yourself, you can say, no, I was talking with Jesus. So repeat with me. Jesus took what was not enough and made it more than enough. Abundance, more than enough, plenty. All these terms are descriptive of the world as it would be if all of us on the planet committed to loving our neighbors as ourselves. Remember that one of the temptations that Jesus faced while he was in the wilderness dealt with abundance. Satan took Jesus in his mind up to a very high mountain from which Jesus could see all the kingdoms of the world. And Satan said to Jesus there, he said, all of these I will give you if you just fall down and worship me. Satan was offering Jesus abundance, but a different kind of abundance, a selfish abundance, an easy abundance. It wasn't an abundance as in, it was an abundance as in, there's plenty for me, but nothing for you. But God's abundance is very different than that selfish abundance that Satan offered Jesus. He shows us his bounty and says, all of this I give to you. It is yours already. One of the interpretations for this great miracle in the Gospel of Matthew is that when it came time for the actual meal, when the disciples began passing out the pieces of bread and pieces of fish, that some of the folks there began to feel a little nudge in their heart and realize that they had something to eat, that they were prepared to eat something on that hill or near that seashore. And that once they saw the giving of the disciples, they then opened up their baskets and began to share with those around them. I think that's a great explanation and a great model on how you and I can help meet the needs of people in this world right now. That out of the abundance that we have, if we just open up our baskets and pull out the gifts, there will be plenty to share. There will be an abundance. In God's kingdom to come, I expect that there will be no use for words like shortage or shortfall, or scarcity, or lack, or any other words that convey that same sense of emptiness. Instead, it will be all about abundance, having more than enough. Here's a little story from a man named William Jones. The story is called A Bargain with God. Listen to it. Simon Pure dropped in on Penny Poor's store one day. He clucked his tongue at the dust on penny store showcases, and he shook his head and sighed at the many bare shelves. Why do you suppose it is, he asked poor old Penny, that your store isn't as prosperous as mine? We both started out at about the same time, with the same amount of capital, almost nothing. 
But now I have a lovely store, store that nets me half a million dollars a year in profit after taxes. And you have only this dusty, half-stocked hole in the wall which barely pays for your rent. Why is that, Penny? Penny just stared vacantly for a moment, shrugged his thin shoulders, and he said, I've often wondered that myself, Simon, but I don't know. Perhaps if I did know the answer, I could do something more about it. Simon studied his gold wristband with the numbers outlined with diamonds, and then he leaned close to Penny's ear, and he whispered, I will tell you a secret. Penny's eyes widened and swiveled around Simon's face. He said, please do. There's one difference between the way you went into business and the way that I went into business, Penny, Simon said, smiling benignly on this short little fellow. He said, when I started my business 23 years ago, I took God on as a partner. Penny didn't really know whether or not Simon was joking or not. But when Simon just stared at him and let those words hang long and in the dusty air, neither laughing or qualifying them, Penny swallowed and said, Well, how did you make God your partner? Easy, said Simon. If you know the Bible, there's where the secret is. 23 years ago, I promised God that if he would prosper me in my business, that I would give him a tenth of the profits, and I would spend a month every summer doing missionary work. Ah, so that's where you go every month, Penny responded. Yes, beamed Simon. And we both kept our ends of the deal all these years. Well, I got to go be going now, but you now know the secret too. So I'm expecting to see some changes around here the next time I come and see you. Laughing warmly, Simon left Penny to ponder his words. And that's exactly what Penny did, too. Penny pondered those words. He thought about how he had supported his little inner city church for the past 23 years, sometimes borrowing off of his insurance policies in order to pay some bill that the congregation just could not come up with enough funds to cover. Penny supposed that he had spent more than one-tenth of his time working to keep that little church going. Plus, he had always looked upon his storekeeping as much more than a business, but more of a ministry, so to speak. Helping keep people from buying things that they could not afford or really didn't need by extending interest-free um, payments to those who looked like they really needed it. And being a kind of counselor, a marriage counselor for the young husbands and wives within his neighborhood. Penny thought about God and God's abilities. And he was mildly surprised that it had never occurred to him to question God's provision. But when he did think about it, Penny couldn't come to bring himself to blame God for the dust and for the empty showcases. Instead, he gave thanks. Three months later, Simon Pure's store burned down to the ground. And the skimpy insurance policies he had on it didn't even come up with half of what he lost. Penny tried to visit Simon on three different occasions, knocking on his door, but each time the door remained closed. So finally, Penny took pen and paper and sent a note of condolence to Simon. In that note, he said things like God was with him, that God would help him start again, and that even he would be willing to share out his resources in order to help get the store rebuilt for Simon. About a week later, a one-sentence reply returned to Penny. He, when he opened the letter, it simply said, There is no God. It's real easy to think that God has blessed us when we have an abundance. But isn't it strange that when we have little, we sometimes think that God is far away. When it comes to tithing, we tithe because we recognize that sin has robbed us of our value. Sin has torn us down to pieces. Sin has removed the good that was present 
and replace it with something that is cold, hard, and calculated. But Jesus invites us to go to his table, to have of a different kind of meal, a meal that will open our eyes to just how abundant his blessings are. Simon Pure looked at tithing as something that was an obligation, something that he did because he wanted to keep God as his partner in his business. But if you're honest, and if he was honest, he was really using his giving as a bargaining chip with God. In other words, I'll keep giving you your 10% as long as you keep blessing my 90%. How often do we not fall into that same trap? Lord, you give me plenty, and I will give out of the plenty. But if you give me little, I will hoard it all for myself. Remember this parable. Remember this great miracle of Jesus. This miracle where it looked like there was not enough. And Jesus was able to show that it was more than enough. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to join us for Holy Communion today. Around your own tables, you may be reminded that of this table that we come to each week for each time that we celebrate Holy Communion. I invite you to think of this table as a table of abundance. No matter how full or how empty we may be, any time that we gather around the Lord's table, we discover that there's enough even for me. So brothers and sisters, I invite you to go through this liturgy as we give thanks for the abundance that is found on this table. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news, brothers and sisters. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you. And blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and by the Spirit. On the night which he gave himself up for us, he took bread. He gave thanks to you above. And then he broke that bread passing among his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the supper, he took the cup, raised it towards the heavens, giving thanks to his Father above. And then he passed it among his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. For this is my blood, the blood, this is my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink from it in remembrance of me. 
And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice, a union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Let us pray. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now, as you're at your table, I invite you to take the bread that you have lifted up and broken. I invite you to offer that to someone, if they're there with you, that you break the bread, hand it to them. And as you hand it to them, say, Jesus took what was not enough. And then as they receive the bread, they can do intention. Once you offer the cup to them, say, and he made it more than enough. So as you receive the bread, we're reminded that Jesus took what was not enough. And then as we receive the grape juice, we are reminded that he made it more than enough. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God.
God who never fails all of our faith in, all of our strength in, all of our future in. the God who never fails all of our hope in, all of our trust in, all of our future in. the God who never fails all of our faith in all of our strength in all of our future in the God who never fails all of our hope in all of our trust in all of our I have to admit that I feel pretty guilty right now from hoarding all that popcorn. So if you need a bag of the pour over butter popcorn, I'll try to bring some to the office and you can stop by and get some. But you do know that we live in the Garden of Eden in many ways. We have been blessed as a people far greater than what our actual worth is. But God calls us to give out of that abundance in order that those who have less or who struggle more, may know that the God that blessed us so richly is waiting to bless them as well. Brothers and sisters, find ways this week to go out and help those who are in need, to offer them hope when they've only known despair, to give out of your abundance to those who barely can scrape through one day to another. I am convinced that we are blessed because God intends us to be a blessing. So go forth and share the love of Christ with all you encounter this week. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.